You are looking at CAE Linux. This is the operating system I've been running off of for a little while now. CAE Linux is based on Ubuntu. Uh, I think the 2020 version is based off of Ubuntu 18.04, which you can also upgrade to Ubuntu 2020. The desktop environment is XFCE, whereas Ubuntu comes uh, regularly installed with GNOME, or I've, as I've heard some people say, GNOME. But uh, you can also install the GNOME or GNOME desktop environment and make it just like Ubuntu. So uh, let's go through making a virtual machine with CAE Linux. Now this will work for Linux, Windows, and Mac operating systems. Let's also go through making a live USB so that you can install CAE Linux onto your hard drive. So, um, why would you want to do CAE Linux as opposed to something like Ubuntu? And I'd say it's because it comes pre-installed with a bunch of really cool software. So you have FreeCAD pre-installed. You have Elmer Finite Element Analysis installed. You have GMesh installed. You have... Uh, you have Saturn installed, you have Salam installed, you have all these softwares, you have OpenFoam, and uh, you even have Paraview, right? All this stuff comes pre-installed in, um, in this distribution of Linux. So I, it really does augment the abilities of FreeCAD to be able to use some of these softwares, which I'm gonna be talking about in the next video. So as of right now, let's make a virtual machine with uh, CAE Linux installed. And to do that, I have uh, this website here, caelinux.com. And caelinux.com, I can go to, um, for all downloads here, <laughs> it'll have a link to its SourceForge. And I can go to the Files folder and see all the versions of CAE Linux now I'm going to go to 2020, and I use CAE Linux Lite.ISO. Uh, this is a single ISO file that has the whole operating system on it, and it has it's what you're looking at, what I'm using basically. Now I also have CAE Linux ISO 3, 2, and 1, so these three are a set, and this is the regular or kind of heavy version that has more software pre-installed in it, that you just use these three ISOs together. But I don't really need that. Um, Lite comes with everything that I want. So I downloaded um, CAE Linux 2020 Lite. Now if I go back and we come over here, uh, let's see, we're looking at CAE Linux 2020. So you can read um, some of the pre-installed software that uh, the 2020 version has versus... There we go. 2020 versus the light version so uh, again I recommend the light I think it's quick simple and easy so once you have that uh, ISO file downloaded I'm gonna open up VirtualBox I'm assuming that you have some experience with VirtualBox if not I have a video where I actually do install VirtualBox into Linux and it's just as simple to do into Windows um, it'll work in Apple products. I just haven't used an Apple product in nearly two decades. Now, <clears throat> let's make a new operating system and we'll call it CAE Linux. I'm making a virtual box of CAE Linux in CAE Linux, but I think it's good to, uh, to demonstrate this stuff sometimes. Uh, since it's based on Ubuntu, I've had great luck calling it 64-bit Ubuntu. And we'll give it uh, a memory size. That'll probably work for me. We'll create a hard disk. We'll make sure that it's dynamically allocated. And uh, we'll give it a little bit more since it's kind of a large operating system. Great, so we have about 54 gigabytes of CAE Linux. Now, as I and I can also adjust the settings on this if I wish. Um, so if we go to advanced, we can make you know these things bi-directional. This is to so that I can copy and paste to and from my host operating system into my virtual box. And I can drag and drop things into and out of my virtual box. I can go to system and I can, you know, give it a little bit more processor and everything else looks pretty good. Uh, 
right? And so I can even set up some shared folders if I wish. I'm happy not having shared folders right now. So we're going to say OK to that. Now when we go to turn this on, it's going to ask us where is the operating system that we want to uh, use. So you can click on this to choose the ISO file that you just downloaded. For me that would be CA Linux 2020 Lite. But I have already uh, loaded it on here, I think. Maybe not, so. So I choose CAE Linux 2020 Lite, we'll choose that, and we'll start. So now we're booting into the ISO file, and we'll get ready to install it here. So if you've never used VirtualBox before, you have a left and right control key on your keyboard. The left control will control the functions of the operating system, or the right control will control the uh, VirtualBox itself. So if I hit right control C, I can cycle through some different options for views. And if I wish to full screen, I can hit right control F. Notice the full screen right now doesn't fill up the whole monitor, and that's because we need to add some things to our install before we'll get an actual full screen. So I'm going to hit my right control C and just maximize my window to get this handy dandy view, and I can deal with just a little bit of distortion. I'm going to hit the install key on CAE Linux 2020, and we need to install this to that allocated space that we made for our hard drive. So we're going to continue, continue, I'll install third-party software and continue. And then this is real easy. We're going to erase disk and install CAE Linux 2020. And we'll confirm the changes. Now it'll ask us for our username, password, and so forth on the next screen. So we set our time zone. We'll select a password. And uh, this might be a longer install than you're used to if you do a lot of VirtualBox OSs like I do. Uh, I like to, you know, explore and try out different operating systems. So this one installs a little bit longer just because it's packed with so much useful software. So be patient and let this thing install. installation is complete. I'm going to restart now. And now we should have a virtual machine running CAE Linux. All right, so we're going to enter our password. I'm not going to upgrade right now. So this is our CA Linux desktop. And I think the first thing that we want to do, of course, I'll use right control C to get me this menu up here where I have devices. And I want to insert my guest editions CD image that comes with um, you know, our, our virtual box. So I insert that. And down here, you should see a CD uh, become visible. <clears throat> and I should have VirtualBox guest editions, and that should probably come in an sh file. Probably autorun.sh is what we're looking for. So I'm going to hit Control Alt T from the terminal and use this autorun.sh. In fact, I'll close the terminal. It's easier just to open the terminal here. And we can say something like dot slash autorun.sh and then enter the password so it looks like we're all installed we're going to hit enter and what that does is among other things allows us to full screen our virtual box right uh, so if i hit right control f 
you can see right now we're not full screen. We have all this black space. And so when we restart our VirtualBox guest editions that we just installed should kick in and give us a uh, full screen. So I'm restarting my VirtualBox now. Let's just make sure that it's full screen. So again, we'll enter our password. As we log in here now, you can see we're still in full screen mode. The bar is going all the way across the top and we have a nice scaled full screen just as it should and was meant to appear. So that's the guest uh, additions that we've installed in action to have a nice full screen. Let's jump over and uh, cover making a live USB if you want to install this to your hard drive. So I'm not very good with tar.gz files that Linux has in it yet. Um, I'm still learning stuff. So I found this process easier in Windows. I'm going to demonstrate this in Windows. Uh, so this is Ventoy, and this is uh, what we would use to get CAE Linux to be on a live USB drive and able to be installed onto a computer hard drive. I think one of the fun, interesting things about this is it's actually the best live USB software I've ever used. I've, I was a unit booting man and thought that that was just the bee's knees. And then when I tried Ventoy, I at first was annoyed that I couldn't use unit booting, even though it, it probably would work with the CA Linux. But um, I tried it with Ventoy. Man, I, I really love Ventoy now. Um, so I just go to downloads and then I'm using Windows, right? So you click on Windows, it forwards you to the releases in GitHub. And I've downloaded Ventoy for Windows.zip. So here I have downloaded uh, this, right? It's in my zip file. So let's unzip this. So there's our extracted files. And then I'm going to plug in a USB, uh, USB disk here. Now any USB disk that you end, that you use, which in my case is the G drive, so here's a uh, probably some operating system I have on this USB disk. Any USB drive you use will be fully formatted, so be careful uh, that you are good to get rid of any data on your USB disk when you do this. I'm going to double click on this application, Ventoy to disk. I'm going to allow it to make changes, of course, and then it recognizes my uh, G drive and I simply click install. Now I've already installed Ventoy on another USB drive, so I won't install it onto this one. So here's my actually my USB drive that I just switched out that has Ventoy on it. And you can see all I have is some ISO files that are for, I have four operating systems on this, and when I boot from this USB, I will have um, a choice to go into any of these ISO files. So I don't actually need to rewrite an operating system to my USB drive every time I boot from a live USB. I just put Ventoy on the USB as I have and then put whatever ISO files I want to and I can boot from any of these operating systems now. It's a pretty amazing software to boot from. And from there you would just go through the install that we've done on the virtual machine and uh, you would have CAE Linux on your computer. Bear in mind, whenever you change operating systems, to always back up your files and make sure that uh, if you make any mistakes, you can recover your files or install your old operating system, whatever you have to do. Well, hope this was helpful. In the next videos, let's go through how CAE Linux can supercharge FreeCAD. Again, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.